Hello everyone, I'm Michael and my heart beats for Linux and open source. The month of April in connection with an even year means the release of a new version with long-term maintenance at Canonical or Ubuntu. I assume you already guessed what it's all about. Today we take a look at a brand new Ubuntu 2404 release. Can Ubuntu live up to expectations? You can find out that and more in my test now. Let's get started. I think most of you are familiar with Ubuntu, but part of my target group are people who have not yet had any contact with Linux and Ubuntu. If you are one of them, here's a briefing with the most important key points about Ubuntu. Ubuntu was launched initially in 2004 with the aim of being the better and more user-friendly Debian. The big thinking behind the mantra was revealed in the years that followed as Ubuntu became the largest and most popular Linux distribution worldwide. It was hard to avoid Ubuntu in the mid-2000s. There were even many computer magazines that included free CDs of Ubuntu. I hope you still know what a CD is, right? If not, that was the medium in the 2000s. You could not only burn music or films onto it, but also so-called ISO images to send along a bootable Ubuntu CD for installation. Canonical releases a new Ubuntu edition every six months in April and October. As mentioned in detail, the combination of April, for instance, 04, and an even year such as 2024 for 24 is a sign of an LTS edition of Ubuntu that comes with long-term maintenance. More on this in a moment. The other versions of Ubuntu, for instance, those released in October or April versions with an odd year, e.g. 2504, are so-called STS versions. STN stands for short-term support in this context as they only receive updates for 9 months. These short-term versions are also known as interim versions. They are published every 6 months and are packed with the newest open source technology at the time. The target group here is not necessarily pure newcomers or beginners, but rather people who are already somewhat familiar with the subject matter and always want to use the latest technology in the Ubuntu Cosmos. The versions with long-term support are called LTS. This stands for long-term support. Updates are always provided free of charge for 5 years. This means that Ubuntu 2404 LTS will receive guaranteed and predictable updates from the LTS branch until 2029. But 5 years is honestly not the end of the story. If you have to or want to stay on this LTS version and do not jump to a newer LTS version, you can get another 7 years of security updates via an Ubuntu Pro subscription and thus extend the entire support period of an LTS version up to gigantic 13 years. The 13 years are made up of 5 years of LTS support plus 7 years of ESM support via Ubuntu Pro. ESM stands for Expanded Security Maintenance. The codename of Ubuntu 2404 is Noble Numbered. Now that we've broken the ice and warmed up, let's move to the technical features. Let's take a closer look at the specs of Ubuntu 2404. Let's start with the minimum requirements. Calculate with these key points. An Intel, AMD or ARM processor for Ubuntu desktop. 4GB of RAM or more. 25GB disk space or more. DVD or USB slot for the installation medium, internet access would be helpful. Ubuntu 2404 is an LTS version that comes with a static version status and will be provided with updates until April 2029. Classic 64-bit architecture is supported. The Ubuntu server also supports other formats in addition to 64-bit architecture. The list is shown below so that you can get an overview and I don't run the risk to break up my tongue or something like that. Ubuntu supports the Debian package format, short DEB, and its own snap container format, which has become more and more of importance. This release is still based on the classic Debian package. As a minor side release, an Ubuntu 2404 version based on snap packages will also be released, but more on this at a later date. 
The potential target group for Ubuntu Desktop is broad and includes private users who are looking for a user-friendly and free operating system, as well as advanced users and developers who appreciate the flexibility and customizability of Linux. In addition, educational institutes, public institutions and companies looking for a stable, reliable, predictable and secure solutions are important target groups. Creative professionals who need powerful tools for design, development and multimedia will find a suitable platform in Ubuntu. Let's take a look at what new features Ubuntu 24.04 has in store for us. GNU Linux Kernel 6.8 at its heart, Ubuntu 24.04 is powered by Linux kernel 6.8, which was released on March 10 and is currently the latest mainline kernel. We can therefore expect the latest functions and the best possible hardware compatibility with this version. This should allow to use new processors, graphic cards and hardware in general to be used to the best of the ability at the moment. GNOME 46 The Ubuntu 24.04 Desktop Edition comes with GNOME 46. GNOME 46 is based on GTK 4.13 and Lipidwriter 1.4.2, but most of the changes in GNOME Shell version 46 are under the hood updates focusing on bug fixing and performance improvements. One of the major new features that Nautilus introduces as a part of GNOME 46 fixes a long-standing performance issue when switching views for example from list to grid. Every time you change the view, Nautilus tries to reload the entire directory. In addition, the search function of Nautilus gets a complete overhaul. Search in current folder replaces the original search button and continues to focus on finding files in the currently displayed directory. Global search is a brand new button that has been added to the left pane and allows you to search for the desired files directly in the entire file system. Improved installer the new Ubuntu installer has been further optimized. The latest fine tuning consists of accessibility optimizations. Specifically, people with visual impairments can have the option read aloud to them or change contrasts. Furthermore, the installer now offers deployment via script. It is therefore possible to carry out initial mass installations with a YAML template. Imagine someone who has to install 100 PCs in a school. This does not have to be done manually each time, but can be done much faster using a script. However, this makes no sense for single workstation installations. Therefore, use the interactive installation for a single computer and the automatic installation for mass deployments. The previous Ubiquiti installer, which has served faithfully since Ubuntu 6.04, has now been retired for good. Improved Software Center The new Software Center, written in Flutter, offers a makeover for those upgrading from Ubuntu 22.04. The new interface looks fantastic, clean and modern. The apps are now organized into different sections such as productivity, development or games. The search now differentiates between Snap and Debian packages, with Snap packages always being the first choice for suggestions. You can see in which direction the whole thing is going. Improved notifications. As already mentioned in the software center, the snap transformation has taken a major step forward with this version. The notification for e.g. snap apps that have been updated has been improved. Although this is not limited to snap apps, the improvements are generally optimized in conjunction with GNOME 46. Further snap transformation. With Thunderbird, another prominent candidate from the traditional app launch team has moved from the Debian package camp to the Snap package camp, but more on this later in the test. A total of up to 12 years of support. With Ubuntu 24.04 LTS, Canonical is extending the maximum product maintenance of an LTS version. Whereas previously 5 years of LTS could be extended with 5 years of ESM via Ubuntu Pro, it is now 7 years of ESM support via Ubuntu Pro. This is not only for Ubuntu 24.04, but for all Ubuntu LTS versions back to Ubuntu 14.04. This is a challenge to Red Hat and SUSE as Ubuntu Pro is even available free of charge for private users or small companies with up to 5 instances. Let's take a look how demanding Ubuntu Desktop is after installation. My system clawed a hefty 12GB from the hard disk. The memory requirements leveled off at 1.1GB. Initially, 1620 Debian packages and 11 snap packages are pre-installed. 
we recognize a quantitative proportionality that's still in favor of the Debian package, but this is not set in stone. It is going in the direction of snap, even if you can't see it clearly yet. Don't kid yourself. At the time of creating this video, GNOME Shell 46.0 was offered. As expected, the whole thing runs in a Wayland session. The Ubuntu desktop comes with minor changes that are more like fine-tuning. The most noticeable change is the Ubuntu icon at the bottom left. Where standard GNOME displays the nine dots of the shelf, there is an Ubuntu logo here. If you click on it, it leads you to an overview of the installed apps. Unlike standard GNOME, Ubuntu customizes its desktop. If you would like to get an impression of standard GNOME, please refer to my test video on Fedora 40 Workstation. The link is in the description down below. Feel free to watch this video and then decide what you like better. I'm clearly on team Ubuntu here. For my workflow, GNOME is better suited to the Ubuntu desktop than in Fedora. With Fedora, I would have to install several GNOME extensions plus GNOME Shell theme and app icon sets, etc. That's not a problem, but with Ubuntu Desktop, I can save myself the trouble. It comes highly polished and looks great. Simple major and ready to use. Clear to get started without customizations. That's how I like it. The Ubuntu Desktop provides a bar on the left that is equipped with a few app quick starters. Apps can be easily added or removed here depending on your taste and needs. The bar on the left can also be moved down or right. It can also be switched to a centered dock. All of this is possible with onboard tools. But that's not the end of the possibilities. In the settings under appearance, we can not only set various gorgeous wallpapers, but also select color nuances. In addition to the standard Ubuntu Orange, other colors can be set, which then have a system-wide effect. Well done! Unfortunately, vanilla GNOME users are still looking down to the tube here and can help themselves with extensions, but these are not as fine integrated into the desktop system as with Ubuntu. All in all, a productive desktop that is immediately ready to use. Now let's come to the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.8, as browser there's Firefox, as email client there's Thunderbird, as office package there's LibreOffice, and as software container we have, who can guess it, Snap. The new Ubuntu installer offers an option here. On the one hand, we can choose whether we want to set up a basic system without a large number of pre-installed additional apps, which would then be the default selection. Alternatively, there is an option to perform a complete installation. In this case, things like Office or Games are also pre-installed. I use the extended selection for this test. Speaking of apps, Ubuntu offers a new apps for firmware upgrades on your computer. This is also written in Flutter and comes as a Snap app. As already mentioned, a total of 11 Snap apps are pre-installed. This is noticeably reflected on the desktop in the form of Firefox, Thunderbird and the firmware upgrader app. To be honest, nothing else is pre-installed. This changes when you install apps from the software center as Snap always take priority here. So most users will install it and don't have an idea if it is a Snap package or if it is a Debian package. With Snap, you also get transparency about verified software developer accounts. If a green tick is listed for the developer in the software center, it is a verified developer account. This means that Microsoft is behind this Microsoft account. For example, at PowerShell or Slack is also behind Slack for the Slack app. What do I mean? Let's have a look. Here is the software center and I search for PowerShell. Here we see the developer is Microsoft PowerShell and here you see the green tick. And if I show with my mouse on it, nothing happens. We have now go to the snapcraft.io website. This is the official website for Canonical's snaps. And here I search for PowerShell and here if I show on this tick, we get a Hoover effect verifying account. The same appears for Slack, for instance, verified account. On the other hand, if a developer account is not verified, it is not shown. Let's check this out with Zoom client. No tick, not verified yet. The same appears here. Slack, you see verified. Zoom, not verified. 
If you work in a sensitive environment, the use of software from trusted sources can be a sticking point that currently speaks in favor of Snap and I have to grundingly admit speaks against the competitor solution Flatpak. Asking yourself why? Because for example the Microsoft account on FlatHub has not yet been verified, but other accounts already are. So if you are dependent on Microsoft products, the situation is currently not optimal on Flatpak side. Sorry. Incidentally, you can test the green tick yourself by searching for the relevant app on the snapcraft.io website. This is the official page of snaps from Canonical. Do it for yourself, verify it for yourself. Ubuntu 24.04 is the 10th LTS version. Considering that one is released every two years, we are looking back on the history of Ubuntu, which now stretches 20 years into the past. I've used them all and since Ubuntu 20.04 I've noticed an improvement in the Ubuntu desktop with GNOME. Ubuntu 18.04 still had to sweep up the pieces after the end of Unity desktop, but with Ubuntu 20.04 Yaru was brought to GNOME shell, with Ubuntu 22.04 upgraded and with Ubuntu 24.04 we've reached a point where Ubuntu is visually on pair with other operating systems like Windows or Mac OS in my eyes. You see the results of the Ubuntu desktop design team on this. Great job, well done guys. I don't know, but for me it feels like Ubuntu 24.04 LTS is both a great version and the last one I'll probably use. Why? Because I'm not entirely convinced by Snap and prefer the competitor Flatpak. Flatpak apps are universally well integrated into all distros. Snaps are a bit more difficult and more or less limited to the Ubuntu Cosmos. Canonical has invested a lot of time and effort in optimizing the app integration, no doubt. You can also see it has improved. Nevertheless, I suspect that Ubuntu 24.04 was the last LTS version that is primarily based on the Debian package. In my estimation, the subsequent interim versions Ubuntu 24.10, 25.04 and 25.10 will focus on the transformation from Debian to Snap. Two years is a realistic time frame from today's development point of view. For my part, I'm focusing on Ubuntu LTS with Flatpak. I scrape Snap out of the system and replace it with Flatpak and desktop apps are then deployed either via PPA or Flatpak app. The whole thing is not without a bit of effort at the beginning, but over the time you don't have any more effort. It is also planned to publish a follow-up video at a later date showing how to replace Snap with Flatpak on Ubuntu 24.04. Now let's come to my conclusion. My compliments to the Ubuntu developers. Ubuntu 24.04 is a great version that will be maintained for another 12 years. So in April 2036 the lights will go out of Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. Are you already thinking that far ahead? You should undoubtedly do this for your pension plan, but for your desktop operating system? I don't think so. And you don't have to, because you know now that you don't necessarily have to worry about it until then. I certainly won't exhaust the support period on the desktop. I'll following the official upgrade path from Canonical. So at the earliest when the first point release has been published. That will be in summer. Ubuntu 24.04.1 is scheduled for August 15. The date is fixed. Late summer or autumn is a good time. But there is no stress honestly, Ubuntu 22.04 will also be maintained for 12 years. Here LTS support will continue until 2027 and thanks to ESM it will continue until 2034. I won't be sticking with Ubuntu 22.04 until then, no question. I'll probably upgrade sometime in the second half of this year. I'll stick with Ubuntu 24.04 LTS via VMs and then decide. Incidentally, that's also my recommendation to you. Wait with the upgrade to Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. The first impatient people are usually the ones who run into unexpected errors and then have to solve them themselves. I have no desire to do that with my system which is important to me. So that's why I wait dutifully. However, if you are using now Ubuntu 23.10, then you are probably a feature hunter and not a fresh newcomer then you can probably fix minor bugs yourself. In this case, I would still advise you to be patient for two to three weeks until you upgrade. Then you won't have to deal with every potential teething problem of Ubuntu 24.04. 
At the same time, the waiting time is not too long. In total, you have time till July 2024 for the upgrade until the STS support of Ubuntu 23.10 ends after a planned 9 month. Ubuntu 24.04 is a great version that is visually well polished and technically up to date. The long product support period are a mega good signal for private individuals and corporate customers both on the server and on the desktop. You get long planning periods. Companies in particular plan their fleets for several years. Ubuntu can certainly score points here and has unique selling points for server and desktop compared to competitors such as Red Hat and SUSE. I like Ubuntu 24.04 very much and I'm looking forward to the practical use of Ubuntu 24.04 in autumn. And now, what is your opinion of Ubuntu 24.04 LTS? Did it convince you to switch? Or if you are using Ubuntu 22.04 or 23.10, when will you upgrade? I'm already looking forward to your feedback. If you like Linux content and want to stay tuned for more videos from me, then don't forget to press the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up and activate the bell to be notified immediately when new videos are released. Thank you for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.